Here's a classic type of problem concerning a drawer full of socks in a dark room. Interestingly, the problem doesn't give us any specifics on exact numbers of socks, but our answer will be the exact number of socks that are in the drawer. Let's read through the problem. Some number of red socks and the same number of blue socks are in a drawer in a dark room. Suppose that the minimum number of socks one must take to guarantee a matching pair, that is a pair of socks of the same color, is the same as the minimum number to guarantee a mixed pair, that is a pair of socks of two different colors. How many socks are there in total? We can make very quick work of this problem, but it will be useful to first consider a slightly simpler problem. 24 red socks and 24 blue socks are again in a drawer in a dark room. So this time we have specific information about the number of socks of each color. 24 red, 24 blue. What's the minimum number of socks one must take from the drawer to guarantee at least one matching pair? So we're taking socks from the drawer, we don't know what their color is, and we need to figure out the minimum number we must take to be sure, even without seeing, that we have at least one one pair of socks of the same color. Let's think about how long we could possibly go before being forced to have a matching pair. So let's say we take out a handful of socks, one sock, two socks, three socks, four socks. We don't know what their colors are, but let's just imagine what they could be and see how long we could go before creating a matched pair. Let's just arbitrarily assign a color to the first sock, perhaps it's blue. Now the next sock could be either blue or red red, but we want to imagine that it's red, thus we continue to not have a matched pair. Certainly it would be possible to draw two socks from this drawer and still not have a matched pair. We could have a blue sock and then a red sock. But what of the third sock? Well, at this point already, the fate of the socks is sealed because this third sock could only either be blue or red. If it's blue, then indeed the first sock matches the third. If on the other hand, it's red, then the second sock matches the third. Either way, by only selecting three socks, we're guaranteed to have a matched pair. Let's just say this third sock was blue. And of course the fourth sock is not relevant. We have answered the question. This is another example of what's called the pigeonhole principle. If we have three socks and only two colors, then indeed at least two of those socks must share the same color, and thus we get that guaranteed match pair. Now notice we were told for this simple problem the number of red socks and the number of blue socks, though it was completely irrelevant to our solution, which is good because in the problem we began with, the harder problem, we were not told the specific numbers of red socks or blue socks, only that the numbers are the same. So returning to this harder problem, let's get some notation to represent the information that we know. There's the same number of red socks as blue socks. So we could use R and B for the numbers of red socks and blue socks, but since they're equal, why don't we just let N be the number of socks? Of course, it is our end goal to figure out what N is equal to. All right, next thing we're told. Suppose the minimum number of socks one must take to guarantee a matching pair, which is just like the problem we just did. That is the same as the minimum number to guarantee a mixed pair. Okay, the minimum number of socks one must take to guarantee a matching pair, like we know, has nothing to do with the number of red and blue socks. It's just three, because there are only two colors, and that's the relevant fact. Perhaps we'll call that S for same color. The minimum number of socks we must take to guarantee a pair of matching color is three. Again, that's because there are two colors. So if we take three socks, at least two of them have to share a color. It doesn't matter how many socks there are total. Of course, it would be relevant if there happened to be no socks at all, but we know that can't be the case because somebody with no socks wouldn't have a sock drawer. Similar logic rules out the case of there being one sock, two socks, or even exactly three socks. Somebody with a sock drawer certainly has at least half a dozen socks. Okay, so S equals three, next key detail. This number, which we now know is three, is the same as the minimum number to guarantee a mixed pair. Okay, so the number of socks that we would need to take to guarantee that we have two socks of differing color, that has to be equal to three. Let's say that D is the minimum number of socks we must take to guarantee that we have a 
mixed pair. Now we know that's three, but it's only going to be useful if we can tie it back to the number of socks in some way. So let's get a little more specific. Suppose we do have R socks and blue socks. Then what is D in terms of R or B? Remember, we happen to know that R is equal to B. Well, certainly if we take R socks from the drawer, it's possible they could all be red. So we could take R socks and still not have a mixed pair. We could have happened to take all the red ones. Of course, the same thing is true of B. It's possible that we could take B socks from the drawer and just have all of the B blue socks and thus still not have a mixed pair. Necessarily then, we must take one more than R socks to guarantee that we have a mixed pair or one more than B socks to guarantee that we have a mixed pair. Of course, in this situation, both of these numbers are the same. So D, the minimum number of socks we must take to guarantee a mixed pair is R plus one. One. But remember, we have just as many red socks as blue socks, so R is half the total number of socks. That means that R is N divided by 2. Hence, R plus 1, which we know is D, is the same as half of N plus 1. And like we said, this has to equal 3, because we were told that S is the same as D. The minimum number to guarantee a matched pair is the same as the minimum number to guarantee a mixed pair. So using that equality, we can now very easily solve for N. Subtract 1 from both sides, and we have that half of N is equal to 2, and thus N, the total number of socks in the drawer, is equal to 4. So maybe I was being a little bit hyperbolic when I said that our protagonist had to have at least half a dozen socks, but no doubt all of his green socks are in his laundry basket or something. In fact, it was likely that taking G green socks out of the drawer in his dark room is what made him start to have all of these thoughts and questions about sock color in the first place. Anyhow, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.